so when it's time to rebuild the catalyst head in your hand warmer and you've got one of the standard size springs this is what we're going to do an experiment with today and a catalyst pad traditionally what we've been doing is using about half of one of those and putting it into a spring which seems to work quite well however I've often wondered what the optimum amount was or whether you could adjust and determine predetermine the temperature of your hand warmer by changing the amount of catalyst so I thought I would do a little bit more of a seat of the pants experiment and see if I had any meaningful results returned from it so what I'm going to do is take one of the standard catalyst pads and some springs and what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to take one third of that pad and insert it into a spring and test that and after I've got a temperature for that I'm going to use the remaining two-thirds of the pad and go from there and as you can see these pads are roughly uh, generally cut to about one inch by 1.25 there is a bit of variation in there but that's what the current aim is for these pads So now what do we have? We've got two pieces, roughly one is one third of the other one. So then I'm going to insert this piece into my spring and I'm going to use my forceps because I can't find my suitable tweezers that I have for this job and this is the method that you employ whether it's forceps or tweezers you insert like that and so now I have the spring and I'm going to put that into the head of my hand warmer and what I like to do after I've put the spring in is bend it with these all hand warmers aren't heads aren't the same but if you have one of the generic Chinese style they often have tabs on them and what I like to do is these tabs I had squeezed up in order to get the original catalyst out and I like to squeeze them back down again in order to actually just kind of stabilize the spring and I like to push the spring downward a bit toward the bottom while I'm bending those tabs back in um, being as I'm going to be putting that spring in and out more I'm not sure if I want to go to all that trouble so now I'm going to fill up some fuel, put this on, let it heat for perhaps 20 minutes and do some temperature measurements. For those of you that aren't interested in the testing methodology you can skip to the next section. The way I'm going to run this is I have a temperature probe on my Craftsman multimeter and I'm going to take capped on tape and those of you who know the properties of capped on tape you'll know why I'm using this so this is what we end up with now we have the probe attached to the circular butterfly hand warmer and I just chose that hand warmer uh, randomly out of all the ones I have 
because they're fairly consistent and they usually work fairly well. And for those of you who are wondering why doesn't he just use an infrared thermometer, which I actually could use this one because it also has a probe function, but the display times out very quickly, whereas on my Craftsman multimeter the, the display perpetuates for longer. And the other thing which many of you will know, but it's a mistake I often see in YouTube videos, is people assessing temperature on a metal surface with their infrared handheld thermometer device. And as you know, that does not work properly. The reflective surface of metal does not give you an accurate temperature reading. And if you really do need to do that method, you need to put some flat black conductive material onto your metal surface and then measure that part of it. But by far, it's much more reliable to use a probe, even if you want to use uh, go in the kitchen and get your spouse's meat sensor. And uh, again, if you're going to do that, based upon my experience, I'd highly recommend you do that when she's not home and return it to exactly the same spot where she had left it. And be careful because sometimes she who must be obeyed will put little hairs and things on it a la James Bond to see if you have been playing with her meat sensor. So there you've been warned again. So after about 20 minutes we got up to about 100 and it's varying there between 99.5 and 100 kind of So as you can see from the time there, or I guess as you can't see from the time unless I move this, I let this go for about an hour and a half because I had a coworker come over and we had a meeting. I was going to say friend, but as you guys all know, I don't have any friends. So 133 with two thirds of that. And that, with these model of hand warmers, pretty much represents what they achieve uh, right from OEM status. So now the question, of course, would be, would half the catalyst still achieve that? It'll probably get close to that. So um, go with half or go with two thirds. But I think what I'm going to try next is just one complete one and see if that changes anything. So I had another meeting that lasted for a couple of hours and just left this. <clears throat> the phone timer actually went dead, the battery went dead. And I checked it after about the first hour, and it was only about two degrees hotter than it was on the previous spring. This again is the full pad in one spring, and it appears to have achieved an extra 10 degrees of heat by putting the full pad in there that's about the maximum that you're going to fit into one spring in terms of the density of packing it in. So the conclusion here to me would be about a half a pad, which is what we've been doing until now, is probably the optimum amount in terms of temperature versus the amount of catalyst material. And if you did want to squeak another 10 degrees out of it, then you could consider using the whole pad up. It 
really depends on how critical the temperature is for your application.